What's up, YouTube? Back with another video. LA Mamba. It is Tuesday, October 10, 2023. And uh, it is uh, about 6 something p.m. And uh, just barely closed right now. Close the business. And we're here making a video. Uh, yeah, guys, so I, I was just uh, remembering uh, back in the days, like my my goals and, uh, you know, it was a very, and I want to talk to you about a very important one that, you know, I had, and I'm sure a lot of you guys, you know, have very similar goal like this one right here. And it's pretty much that goal, right, of uh, becoming, a, uh, becoming a millionaire. So it means... Uh, equity of a million uh net worth of a million pretty much whatever you know if you if you were to sell everything you own uh and you would uh pretty much uh you know cash out right cash out with uh whatever's gonna cost you to like sell and you're gonna be left with a dollar amount right so uh that that's what i'm talking about if you got a million dollars or more and uh of course that's just a starting point right it's just like uh like uh, not a starting point but a starting point and then from there you make a new goal once you hit that goal it's like any goal right you hit a, a goal you hit a milestone and then you make a bigger one after that um but it was a, a very a very uh wanted goal of mine for many years um and uh and i want to talk to you a little bit about uh, achieving that achieving that goal how can you become a millionaire and uh through the, the tire shop business uh and counting right and keep going from there once you hit that goal and uh i know a lot of guys would love to like uh you know hear this probably this subject right here because you know if you're if you're like newer to the business you're like man i gotta sell like you know <laughs> a lot of tires to hit that that million dollar mark right um but it, it it's a uh, it's, it's not as hard as you think it just takes a, a plan it takes a long time but uh it it doesn't uh it's not complicated at all so uh i wanted to talk to you about the first route right uh very few people have done the first route um and i'll explain to you why um but here we go so let's start let's talk about you start from scratch right you're you know you're uh a younger person you have a uh, you know very uh low funds but you have a lot of energy a lot of years ahead of you right so uh you want to uh get into the tire shop business and uh you just love it you just it's just something that uh, that you know you want to do and it's like uh okay i got to uh first learn the business right and so you'll uh you'll go to work at a tire shop your uncle's tire shop your your dad's you know your friends you know family's tire shop and uh with goals of one day opening up your own tire shop right and so yeah i, I say about two years min uh, minimum of uh if you work every day right five days a week you know most most tire shop workers actually work six days a week um most of them that i know throughout the years but let's call it five days a week if you want to just take it easy right but with that you have enough experience to learn the business you learn every scenario there is pretty much um how to take off wheel locks you know how to like you know air up tires that are wider than the wheels and backwards how to air up you know the tires are thinner than the wheels you know those stretch tires uh you know and, and the whole goal of doing like this whole like learning curve is to get through problems faster because you're going to be able to get to these problems in the beginning but it's going to take some time like like too slow a time to consider to be considered a uh decent for like the customers waiting 
in the front while you're doing the damn thing you're like struggling and you're trying to you know air up these tires and then it's like the cheetah blast but it didn't grab the first time and then you blast it again it doesn't work the second time but the third time you grab it and you're like man now i gotta do three other tires like this but if you're a pro you can hit it like on the first time you grab it the very first time it just the experience of not how to angle the, the wheel on the tire is, is like okay this is how you do it you know like i don't i don't just stand up straight i want to angle it down and shoot the cheetah up and then it'll, it'll grab that way just an example right and and so you'll get the experience of like how to deal with doing things faster it's always about doing things faster the same quality of work but just doing things faster right and so then you go you get your two years experience and it's like you know one way or another you figure out how to uh get the money acquire the money to open up a tire shop so then you're like uh i don't know maybe you work four years and then uh or five years and save up the money yourself and open up your own tire shop whatever it is you partner with somebody or someone lends you some money or you partner with somebody or with family partner with or whatever reason you're able to start your own tire shop you you, you know you you supply everything and you get the machines you get the licenses you open up the tire shop business you get your first customer and then from here on you know you you pretty much uh have some money so like you know in the beginning you're not gonna have enough pay the rent but then you know six months go by and now you're making a lot more cash flow which equals to now you can pay the rent from the customers and then uh and then little by little you start saving up uh more money to like be able to buy a set to keep in stock and then uh you, you make that one set into two sets those two sets into four sets those four sets into eight sets eight into 16 and just you know you just keep doing that with your money right and uh while paying your bills and, and the whole goal is just to like build up your inventory there's no even not even no goals to like make money for yourself it's like you're gonna be at that point where like well i need a new i know i need another car but you know i'm in the build i'm in the middle of my building stage and uh like nah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna spend the money on the car i just repair it i'll keep it a little bit while longer and then i'll, I'll use that money to buy tires instead right you'll be at that point like man like you know you're choking and growing like every single week just to acquire more used tires and like to like pay for the disposal and you're like buying another set here and there brand new to keep in stock and then you know you go you go on right you go on and it's like okay so so pretty much you 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 go fast forward right five years and you got your inventory and and now you're you're after let's call it five years done you, you you know right after five years you you have cash flow coming in you know you got enough tires to like where you're comfortable with that with the tires but you open up a small shop right you open up a small shop and you're like you know uh i want to become a millionaire and I, I feel like this small shop i need i need to upgrade my shop right and so like you you'll leave that spot and you get a bigger shop right so then you go to the next step if you want if you want to sell more if you want to make more money you got to have more space so you're gonna leave that shop and, and get another shop and you're like whatever happens you know i'll sell it to my cousin or, or whatever you know like you know seller financing i'll sell it to a family member or a friend or something and now they have their shop and then it, you know you help them out with that but the point is now you moved on to a bigger shop right so you take all your inventory you know they can stay there with you know with uh, the older machines or whatever it is you can take your own old machines and you can buy new ones on top of that whatever it is you you spend all your money from from the goal the, the five year you you just you know i like to say your energy right let's not call it dollar amounts let's call it your energy so like your energy from all five years all the tires all the machines and then you fast forward and you just rolled it over to the next shop right so then now you made a little bit of money on the sale you know you have your primo out you saw i don't know so you sold it for like 40 grand or whatever it is and shit but you took all the good stuff right or, or he just paid you for the machines and and the licenses and you just like you know sixty thousand or whatever it is 
and then you just like moved everything to the next shot. So now you have your name, you have your tires, you have your machines, you went to the city, you got a bigger spot, and now you're able to have way more storage space, right? So then you're like, all your energy just forward to a new platform, which is the new shop, right? Now you have a bigger shop, right? You upgraded your shop. You, you did very good on the first five years, and uh, you could have stayed there. You could have stayed there and continue to make a lot of money, like for what it was, but you're not gonna make as close as amount of money as you are in the new shop. Because now you're gonna have more inventory, which, you know, and that's gonna have more customers. You're gonna have more everything, you know what I mean? So now you, little by little, you go another five years of choking and growing. Now you're filling up the new shop. You got bigger racks. You got a lot of more customers. Now, now, instead of having like you and one guy and maybe two guys helping you out, maybe three guys on the weekend, but during the week, let's say like you and two guys, now your new shop, you're gonna be able to have like five, six guys helping you out, plus you, because now you got more, but this is like now already like going towards like the other five years. So let's call it year 10, right? Let's call it year 10 in business. So you got like, let's call it two years of, of like working for somebody. You got five years in your small shop and you're already at year 10 at your new shop and you already got a lot of customers coming in. And so this is what I'm talking about. This one is like, so if you want to go the, the route where very few people have gone is when you do the same thing, you jump onto a bigger shop now. And that, those are like the, the top, you know, 3% of the whole like tire shop business. This is this what you're looking at here now. This is not one of those, you know, this, this is, is like that second shop I was talking about, but that third, you know, that third shop, which is bigger than this, you know, you, this is not going to be having like 15, emplo 15 employees, you do alignments, you do breaks, you know, you know, this is like, you have like, you know, thousands of new tires in stock now and uh, a lot of, a lot of use too, right? But, um, but that's one of those, you know, top 1% shops that, you know, you have like customers all day, every day. Now you have to like market online, like for sure. At, uh, at the second shop, you don't have to do that. Like you don't have to get like Google ads. You don't have to like, you know, market like heavily online to, you have to bring in that traffic because now that big place is gonna cost you big money, whether it's you bought it or is you renting it. Either way you wanna do it, it's all good. Um, but but if you if you have a bigger shop, it's just a ton of money is gonna cost you per month for like that rent. So you have to be bringing in, you know, like 20 workers on the weekend type of deals. Like, you know, 15 to 20 workers is like a lot of like, you know, all day, every day uh, sales. And, and from there, again, you start choking and growing like hard. From year 10 to 15, it's like, you're just investing, buying new, you're buying like containers now. You're buying containers from like overseas, right? You're gonna be new and used, right? It's like, now you have a lot of room. You gotta fill up all these racks and you just have like hundreds of thousands of dollars invested in like new inventory and, and used too. But it's like, okay, now that shop, that shop is going to be bringing in like a million dollars a year type of deal. And, and, and so like, you know, that, that business now, it is going to be worth that, you know, that million dollars, right? Or, or more. I mean, it's, it's a lot more than that if you're in Cali, right? But if you have one of those shops, it's like, okay, you have one business, one income, it's a big income. It's, it's bringing in a lot of cash flow, but that's going to be the way is like, where it's gonna be really well worth it for, for like your goals. Just an example, like those those big expiring goals, expire, aspiring. You know, you know, like talk about <laughs> it's uh, you know that that that's a, now that's a goal. Is like man, like it took me like 15 years just to build it. It's not even like money for yourself type of deal. It's, it's just like inventory after inventory of years of just like 
grinding and just like moving all your energy forward to the next to the next deal and it's like okay now you can enjoy that income that you're bringing in yeah you're 15 you're bringing in that dough now it is like that bigger dough no like that you know like it's like very few amount of americans can get that amount of money right so that but that's a way that very few amount of people have done in this business and it's not the common route and, and all and also while you're that big you can also even like uh, wholesale to the smaller shops i mean you have so much storage that you can even wholesale to the smaller shops around there just to get that inventory moving because you gotta buy another container that's coming in that's gonna cost you again like a hundred thousand or, or whatever it is more to get that inventory it's gotta you have to have a lot of customers a lot of like you know it's a lot of pressure but if you're you're already comfortable with it you're you're, you're like i got this and no problem and eventually you will get that good if you're at that level and i'm not at that level and i don't want to be at that level because I, I have other goals in mind right so check it out so that's the first route so the second route is the way most people do it i'm, I'm talking about like it, when it comes to about being a millionaire like i'm talking about like 90 something percent of the tire shop owners that are millionaires became millionaires this way right so here we go the second route is okay the same story you got the two years uh learning and then you get you open your shop and then you get the five years and you can even stop there at the small at the small shop level real small you're gonna be very efficient you know have less workers uh bringing in that dough and i've seen a lot a lot a lot a lot, a lot of people as a matter of fact, most people stay at that, that level right there and then they, they take the next step, right? But, or the second way is, is uh, you get to that next shop, so you, you roll over all your energy, you get a bigger shop, and now you're at that second shop level, right? So level two, they just call it level two tire shop, right? So you get to that level two tire shop, you have much more rooms, something like this. Like you have a lot of room for the outside, the inside is not even that big. Uh, you can get a big inside if you want, like a, a thousand, you know, my, my shop inside is a, a thousand square feet, but, you know, you can get like a two thousand, three thousand square foot shop, plus the outside, and then you can hold all your tires outside, right? But m most get something like around this size, once they get to a certain level, like whether they want to or they were push to do it because the other owner sold the property and then they had to get another shop but they're like i don't want to get the same shop i want to go a little bigger now i'll just start all over again and and uh get to that next level um and so they most people do that they just like for whatever reason they were pushed out to the next level right and so they get the choke and grow and then they, you know after another five years you know you got like call it you know at least 10 years in the business and it's like, all right, you got 10 years in business, it's, it's profitable. And from here on, like, all I did was just like, you know, paid all my bills. You know, I got money for all my inventory. I uh, have all these customers. Number one thing is the customers, right? The customer base, they know your brand. They, they know your style of working. And even if you lose all your inventory, you can grab it back, all of it no problem at all and uh because you still got all those customers coming in so how fast can you replenish your all of your inventory if you had to start scratch for, again it, it's not going to be no problem because again you're w just working just working and bringing in that money and just all you're doing is buying next week buy more buy more it's easier when you have like 10 years under your belt buying tires and just saving them compared to like you know year two in the tire shop you know, have a little bit of customers, you have to like pay your bills, and then you can see like a set or two on the side for yourself in order to like you, you pretty much choke and grow to the next level, right? And then you got like four, and then A, 16, you know, it goes on 32. And so, again, back to the story. You have the level two, 10 year, and then from here it's like, okay, cash flow's coming in. It's a good amount of cash flow what do I do next, right? 
And it's like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. With all the freaking 90 something percent of the millionaires that are tire shop owners made it in real estate. They, they grew their wealth in real estate. And again, it's like, if, if I'm saying it to you right now, Mr. Ali Mamba saying to you guys, if you want to like get into the tire shop business, you have to freaking learn the real estate business too. The good thing is you didn't have a long time to learn about it, but don't ever like think this is it. Cause you know, this is it. I'll tell you what this is it is. A lot of people who didn't do nothing when it comes to the real estate business and didn't go to that next big shop level, right? They just stayed there and it's like, it was the same thing over and over. You just, uh, you know, you just work to pay bills. You know, you just work to pay bills, save a little bit, blow it on whatever, have a second side home. And, and the, the, the home, you just rented it out because it was too far. And it's like, I don't want to deal with it. I just rented it out, I'm cool over here. And uh, but that was it, right? Um, but if you, if you decide to like, learn about the business and push it forward, then year 10 tire shop, second level tire shop business, now you have money to invest, right? Now you have money to like buy a property and it's like, okay, what am I going to do next? Again, choke and grow. Oh, I need to do this to it. Okay. Let me get a construction guy and let's do this fence right here, whatever. Oh, now I got to, you know, fix the inside of this house or, or whatever it is. Or unit number one, fix it, right? All right, we fix it up nice. And then uh, everything good. And then you're like, all right, I got to learn how to find a tenant. And I got to learn how to screen a tenant. But now you do that and you already did it. Put it in, you got a tenant and you already had a past tenant. Let's just call it a duplex. Time goes on, you know, a little bit of years. Uh, tenants are happy. Everything's good. There's no need to sell a property, but you see, it's like okay, my cash flow is like I had an all-time max of a thousand dollars a month, and it's like, but the property now is worth like a few hundred thousand more or, or whatever it is, and you're like, huh? Look, I have a lot of money in this here. Let me sell this thing, and it's like, wait a minute. I'm willing to not grab any money, you know. I know if I sell it, I can buy four units now. And with those four units, I'll be able to make more money. Um, but I don't want to pay taxes. And so you start researching, you're like, huh. There's this one thing called a 1031 exchange that if I sell those two units, I don't got to pay taxes. And all it does is you get your energy from this two unit, it goes to this bank account held by the 1031 agent and then uh so that's sold you got your money here you're looking for properties over here you find and you're like studying you're like you know what i have enough money that i don't have to buy you know i don't have to buy four units let me just skip this i can buy eight unit this time right so you're like all right i have enough money to buy eight unit let's do that cash flow is much better you have more tenants and you have uh, multiple ways of forcing appreciation, right? And so then you're like, oh, okay, how do I do that? And then you're like, oh, yeah, I, I, I asked this person, oh, yeah, I asked person, how, does that, how does that work? How does this work? How does that work? And you're like, uh-huh, all right. You buy that unit and it's like, all right, let's do this. You know, kick the person out. And it's like, okay, put it to market rents. Now the property's worth this much. You know, I build a, something here. I, you know, do something there. And it's like, all right, now it's worth this much. And it's like, oh shit. Uh, I made much money much faster in the A unit than I did in the many years of the two unit, you know? And if more time goes by, then I'll be more making more money, right? Or whatever it is. I mean, it's like the, the guy who like wanted to buy a house, but he's like, huh, if I buy this house, I have to pay this thing 100% of my money from the tire shop. But if I buy this four unit, then those three units can pay my mortgage and I can live there for free. Oh yeah, let's do that. You know, you save up a little bit more down payment and you do that and then the guy just stays living there for like, you know, 20 plus years, 25 years. And now that property, you know, you paid, uh, 
you know something like 250 is worth like 1.1 million and it's like oh shit you know i paid it off like years ago i have this uh four unit you know in a, in a very good market worth 1.1 and all i did was just pay it off uh at year like uh you know 17 or whatever it is and the guy becomes a millionaire right a lot of stories like that i mean i got so many people that i know in the tire shop business the the guy will go and you know buy a few houses just because they were cheap at that time you know he didn't do nothing he just held on to them and it was just like you know 20 years later passed by you're like more time in there right uh there's a lot of stories like that in the tire shop business a lot of owners that saw the value in real estate they just like you know the mind was like oh yeah i just gotta buy something hold it for like over 20 years and it'll be worth a lot and it's like all right like it paid off on its own and it's like all right cool like now i can retire right um but that's like the old way to do things that's the old way to do things ladies and gentlemen but the new way is like you know you got you know multiple ways multiple exit strategies to like buy properties and, and grow them you know you you exchange them into something bigger and now you own more units and you own more units and you own more units and all those units are paying off on their own plus to have a bonus they're putting cash flow in your pocket every single month from the leftover of what the mortgage is paid the expenses are paid oh yeah there's nothing left to do with this money it just goes straight to your pocket oh shit that's awesome but you really feel that expense when you just get bigger and bigger and it's like okay you know in the beginning it's like oh yeah 800 bucks a month it's uh it's not life-changing you know what i mean it's all right but it's like okay now it's you know let's call it now you know a few years pass by and that 800 dollars a month that's going into your pocket becomes eight thousand dollars a month going into your pocket because all your other expenses were paid all the mortgages are getting paid and you have like an extra eight thousand dollars left over going to your pocket like holy shit this is kind of life-changing because now i don't even have to work at the tire shop no more right but that's how the people do it i mean most people have done it this way it's gonna stay the same way many years it ain't gonna change and it's just gonna be just more and more people um doing this i mean whatever you want you know what i mean it's like this is like the way for your average person to make a million dollars or more you know this is just like a very basic way and it works and it works and it works the other way is more complicated i have to like more low like you get lawsuits now you have to hire a lawyer and you know stuff like that and it's fine you know it, it, it's fine because like okay yeah your lawyer is, is charging you like freaking fifteen thousand, but man, you're making like, you know, cash flow to your name like thirty thousand a month. Let's just say, is like who cares? I pay fifteen, but I, you know, like, you know, it, it's it's more complicated to go all the way, and it, it takes a, 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 you know, a different person now, cause like, now you gotta deal with like bigger like problems, um, and you gotta deal with more money, right? The other way is like, you don't have to have a lot of money to invest in real estate. Like the other way is you make your, just an example, your 5,000 turns into 10, 10 to makes it 20, 20 turns into 200,000. And it's like, and it's not like you grab it. It's just, it's there in equity, right? Later on, if you want, you can pull it and do fun things with it. But for, you know, you know, as time goes by, you're like, yeah, you know what? I don't want to touch that. I just want to make it grow more. I'll leave it there a little bit and it's like all right i'm gonna just uh exchange it i'll buy like a 20 unit this time so i'm gonna get this 20 unit and i'm gonna do the same thing raise the rents you know get the people out that are not paying fix it up very nice put two people in it for market rent value i'm gonna build like a little side five units on the side of that there's a little bit of land right there now that you know now that forces it to a few hundred thousand and it was like, man, it, it only took me like two hours a month to do this because I had my property manager do all that. I had my loan guy do the loan. I had my construction guy do that. I just have to talk to them on the phone, do this, do this, do that. And it's like, all right, you know, go ahead. Uh, I'll pay you. The money comes in from the rents. You pay the construction guy or you get the loan. You pay the, the, the contractor to build those five units. And it's like, oh, shit, you know, another five years go by. It's like that thing grew by hundreds of thousands and it was like man 
I love the real estate business. <laughs> but uh, that's what I wanted to share with you guys. It's just a little bit of a, a window for you guys to look at. Uh, I know you guys know a lot of tire shop owners too that, that been through a lot of stuff. And uh, just look at the guys who bought real estate and look at the guys who didn't. And then uh, you have a better uh, understanding of what I'm talking about. But anyways, I'll let you guys go and I'll see you guys next time. Mamba out.